Time, of course, now for the press preview, our first look at what's on the front pages as they arrive. Time to see what's making the headlines. Uh, with, we hope, fingers crossed, the eye columnist Yasmin Alibi Brown, but also the political journalist and broadcaster. Theo Usherwood. Now, they will be with us. Ah, indeed. There she is right now. Uh, they will be with us from now until just before midnight. But before we talk to those two, uh, let's run you through those front pages that we have, beginning with the Metro, uh, remarking on the fact that only 15 asylum seekers have taken their places on the controversial Bibby Stockholm barge. The Metro has the headline, Not All Aboard. Let's see what they did there. Uh, here's the Mirror. It regrets to that news, calling the government's immigration policy clueless. The Mail carries the Home Secretary Suella Braverman's praise for the paper's reporting on allegedly unscrupulous immigration lawyers. The Eye reports that Ofqual, the regulatory body for exams, will not be making any dispensation to take account of teacher strikes when marking for A-level students. They are due to receive their results next week. Uh, here's The Guardian. It has the findings of a study linking air pollution to antibiotic resistance. And The Pink and the Financial Times hears that in a difficult environment for private equity firms, they're increasingly offering potential clients sweeteners on discounts, uh, sweeteners like discounts on fees. Just a reminder that by scanning the QR code you'll be seeing on screen during the programme, you can check out the front pages whilst you watch us. But as said, uh, we are joined tonight by Yasmin Alibi-Brown and Theo Usherwood. Lovely to see you both. And, and Yasmin, I suppose we should just get straight on into it today because there is pretty much on the front pages at least only one story in town, that story down in Devon, and it's on board at the Bibby Stockholm. Let's start with the Metro, their headline, Not All Aboard. I mean, I, th I think we all get what they're saying there. Yeah, this, they're talking about the fact that there have been um, a number of legal challenges to what's being done, which is within our law, which is not just British law, but it's international law. And so instead of stuffing whatever number of uh, people they wanted to stuff on this awful uh, barge, which, as many people have said, firefighters, others, it's a real risk and a miserable place, for those who are trying to escape, have escaped and have done, gone through so much. Um, so that's the Metro front page, you know, um, and this is a recurring theme um, at the moment. You know, the lawyers are the problem, uh, which I think is really dangerous for a democracy. Um, Theo, I, I suppose, though, if, you, if you're being sympathetic to the government on all of this, there was a time when it looked like no one might be getting on that barge. At least the process has begun now. Yes, they've got 15 on the barge. They had hoped to get 50 going by uh, reports, but there are a number of legal challenges. Care for Calais, uh, the refugee group, managed to stop 20 uh, being placed on uh, Bibi uh, Stockholm uh, today. So, uh, from the government's point of view, they have at least managed to uh, get some uh, asylum seekers, 15, onto the barge when uh, they're still waiting to try and deport anybody to uh, Rwanda. I mean, looking at this... Uh, through um, a political prism, if you um, like. The important thing for the government is that they are seen to do something mm -hmm. and appeal to those voters, particularly in um, contested territories like the Red Wall at the next election, um, that this country, uh, as they would see it, is not a soft touch. And that uh, if you read inside the Metro, uh, the, there's one headline about, you know, criminal gangs promising migrants who make that perilous crossing from often from war-torn countries uh, to this country, uh, that they can stay in a hotel. Um, and the point that the Rishi Sunak and Suella Brahman, the Home Secretary, are trying to make is that actually you won't necessarily stay in a hotel. It won't necessarily be particularly comfortable. Uh, and it's going to be, uh, you, you could find yourself on this barge. Now, you will be able, those on the barge will be able to leave um, and they'll be able to um, access a gym and a canteen. Um, but it is not the same, uh, and the government's at the same time looking to reduce the bill. It's around £6 million pounds a day. Uh, the budget, and I think it was a Sky News, Sky News obtained the figures, um, is considerably cheaper, even when you uh, do it per head. 
um, compared to uh, putting people up in a hotel. So the appeal is, from the government's point of view, is that we're not a soft touch. And if you come to this country, you may find yourself having a much less pleasant stay uh, than you might otherwise have expected or been promised by uh, these uh, scandalous criminal gangs who uh, are making, uh, who are trafficking people to this country. Yasmin, as, 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 oh, sorry, on you go, please. On this. I really do need to come in on this. We have to remember nobody, absolutely nobody, goes into exile or leaves their nation or their country unless they absolutely have to. Nobody goes through what these people have gone through. The idea that they're coming here to stay in our hotels is really offensive. And secondly, secondly, we, 15 other European countries, account, when you take into account population differences, take far more asylum seekers than we do. And here we are objectifying them and turning them into this, this kind of almost gang of criminals. There are children there, there are women there. There are all kinds of very well, not, desperate not, not, people not currently. Not who currently are from countries which we know are troubled. I want to... Re and British public opinion, recent study in June showed, and there was a, a study of 29 nations, attitudes towards refugees and asylum seekers. Britain had the third, British people had the third most positive attitude towards refugees and asylum seekers. This is not what the public wants. Sure. It's what the Tory party thinks it needs. Sure, sure. Well, just on that basis, then, as we take a quick look at, at, at the front of the Financial Times and indeed their story, key moment, again, the, the punning going on today it seems slightly, uh, slightly wider the mark. I mean, first migrants board the barge. I mean, Theo, if, if, we, take, if we take what Yasmin is saying at, at, at face value, then, I mean, what, what are the Conservatives doing this for if there is this overwhelming support for migrants and asylum seekers coming to this country and making their place? And so many of us, including myself, have, have members of their family who arrived here you know, many, many years ago, particularly after the Second World War. But so, so why are the Tories doing this? It's, it's, it's about the particular uh, core of voters that the Tories are trying to appeal to. So if you look at, if you look at where uh, this particular issue when it comes to migrants crossing the Channel, um, and I, I don't disagree with anything that uh, Yasmin has said, by the way, I'm just trying to put forward the argument from, from the mm. government's point of view, um, is, is that um, if you look at, the, the, it's mainly in Kent constituencies where you've seen uh, these dinghies wash up. And then particularly the Conservative MPs in red wall seats are very worried about what their constituents are telling them. And that's the, that's the, that's the point, is that the Tories have got to make sure that they hold on to as many of those seats as possible at the next election. And it's also, uh, this policy, a real test now for Keir Starmer. Is the Labour leader, if he becomes Prime Minister, going to keep this barge? Now, electorally, you would have thought that Keir Starmer would, would say that he'll have to keep the barge. Well, didn't, didn't, he didn't he say a good one idea. point? But but within Starmer, now, um, the problem is not that, you know, we have nowhere to put people. The, this government, for four to five years, has failed to duly process those who come. They've almost kind of, I feel, and this is my view, they've deliberately built up this, this problem so they can be seen to be tough on migration. And I just want to ask people watching, is this democracy now, and I mean all parties, all the main parties, only serving red wall, voter, uh, red wall voters? Are they the only people who count in this country? Do the rest of us really not matter. I mean, I think this is a vital question. This obsession with red wall voters has, has I think, you know, completely stricken Keir Starmer into a kind of paralysis. Yeah. And that, you know, it, it, it's a, a, a terrible sight to witness. Let, let's let's um, see back to in To see here. him paralysed by it and, but, but like, you know, like just turning on every pledge. But there are all the other main parties. What about the rest of us? We do not like this. Okay, we yes, feel for these people.
I, ju I just want to let so sorry, Eisman. I just want I, I, I just want to let Theo back in as we again we will take a look at the front page of the Guardian. Their headline: Reprieve for asylum seekers or ordered onto barge. I mean, we'll see what the rest of the papers how the rest of the papers report the the, the, the legal action. I suspect some of them will be pretending that is a that is a massive surprise. But but are you of the same view though, Theo, that this week, this small boats week that we are seeing, we were talking about what a maximum of 500 people who can get on this thing when we've got a backlog in the tens of thousands. Is is I hate the dead yeah, cat. I, the, I hate the idea of dead cat but this does precise, seem like a distraction. But, precise, but precisely, I mean, we've got numbers out today in the mirror, I think, have uh, led on those numbers, 50,000 mm. uh, in hotels. And this barge is going to take just 500. 15,000 migrants have arrived in this country this year. The barge is not going to solve the problem. That's the point. The point is that the barge sends a message from Rishi Sunak and from the government to those voters that it wants to win over, that it is strong on migration. If you look at the Rwanda policy, that policy hasn't deported anybody uh, yet, but Keir Starmer can't back it because of his own party. And so therefore, Rishi Sunak can say, well, we have a plan to stop the boats. It doesn't matter whether it's successful or not. The point is that Keir Starmer can't support that plan. And so the Tories can turn around and say, well, you're soft on immigration. You won't stop uh, the boats. This is what we want to do. And of course, then what we see is what we've seen reported in the Daily Mail, and we're now seeing come through when it, in, in precise terms with these numbers for the Bibby Stockholm, where you've got 50 people were due on this barge, and, mm. and by all accounts, 35 were, were stopped because of legal challenges, because lawyers managed to intervene. And that just feeds the narrative that it's lefty lawyers who are stopping the government getting their way on this particular issue. And of course, the prime lefty lawyer that everybody from the Conservative Party is going to be pointing their finger at is none other than Keir Starmer. So politically, mm. this is a really, potentially for Keir Starmer, a really damaging policy because he's got to, if he's going to stay in lockstep with the Conservatives, and I remember when I was at LBC, Keir Starmer would be asked by, I think, Nick Ferrari, who said, How, what, what's your policy on immigration? And he'd proudly say, well, there's actually nothing much between ourselves and the Conservative yeah. Party. He wants to be as close as he possibly can to the Tories, so he's not portrayed as being soft on immigration. And policies like this and policies like uh, Rwanda enable the Tories to draw some gap between themselves and the Labour Party and portray the Labour Party potentially sure. as being soft on immigration. Yeah, let's just let's just yeah, take a quick Yasmin, just one second. Yasmin, one second. Yasmin, one second. Yasmin, one second. And the polls are still tumbling. Yasmin, just one second. Let's bring in the front of the Daily Mirror here. Just, just, just on the on the topic that, that, that Theo was saying there. Look, there is there is clearly an issue with people coming to this country, identify a, a political issue with people coming to this country. If these barges were safe, if they passed all the necessary checks, and it did ultimately save the taxpayer money, is there anything? To, that can be said against housing legitimate asylum seekers in this fashion, the Aspen. Are you asking me? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I am, yes. No, sorry. Um, look, the very sight of this thing, what it looks like, what the firefighters are saying about it. What will we do if a, if a, if disease breaks out on that these barges? That wasn't my question, though. That wasn't my question. If these boats, if these barges were deemed to be safe, by the FBU and others, and they saved money, in principle, what is wrong with asy housing asylum seekers in this fashion? I don't think it's fair or humane. Would you, would you, listen, I came to from Uganda 50 years ago, yeah? Because um, uh, uh, Asians from Uganda were expelled. We were housed in army camps all over the country. And they were, you know, on the surface, they, they were terrible, but we could come and go. We had loads of people around us, wonderful British people who came to see us, to help us, um, to give us clothes, to give us love. And that helped us get through that period. What you, this is like a kind of floating prison for people who are not, who are not tried and tested criminals. They are desperate people from Syria from Afghanistan, which was our responsibility. So I'm sorry, I, there is nothing in me, not a cell in me, which can tell you it's fine. It is not fine. And millions of British people are saying that too. Um, and I think we should also be very concerned about these new attacks 
on judges and lawyers and um, RNLI, all the good people in our country who are now being demonized um, because the Tories are falling in the polls. That's the problem. We can say, oh, you know, Labour's terrified of saying anything, and it is to their shame that they are. But they, the, the numbers, yeah. the Tory numbers are falling. And as they fall, they, they, they've declared a war on the most helpless, voiceless and most wretched. Indeed, indeed. And of course, as our, as our correspondent Mario Rora was saying outside the Home Office, look, the legal challenges have just been started, so I suspect this will be a story on the front pages for, for, for days to come. Guys, pause just where you are, because coming up after the break, we'll be discussing this story. The infamous lettuce has returned. I'll be taking a leaf out of the Star's book oh, and of the that. day. Explain exactly is what is going on here, because it does, to my eyes, look like a lettuce with a wig, a couple of eyes on it and a ribbon attached. What's happening? To think back to uh, last uh, autumn, and of course, Liz Truss lasted uh, just 44 uh, days in office as Prime Minister. And you'll remember the Daily Star had that webcam uh, with uh, Liz Truss, well, it, it was a lettuce, and it was the argument was that the lettuce shelf life was going to outlive uh, Liz Truss as Prime Minister. And in the end, uh, the Daily Star and the lettuce won out, Maybe. and Liz Truss was ousted from office, um, uh, was ousted from office by the time uh, the, the the lettuce was still, well, I think it could still be eaten by somebody uh, should they uh, choose. Now, of course, proper campaigning journalism as a departure. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it, it went viral. So uh, for, for many uh, in journalism, that's that's the main thing. Uh, now, uh, as a result of departing as Prime Minister, Liz Truss gets a, an honours uh, list and she was due to hand out, uh, according to the Times, 14 uh, gongs, a uh, mixture of peerages and knighthoods and damehoods. Uh, but apparently the Times is reporting um, that uh, two people have turned down uh, uh, an award uh, from Liz Truss because they simply didn't feel uh, that it was right to accept um, a, a gong as a result of only serving uh, a prime minister for 44 days uh, in number 10. And you'll remember, of course, this comes off the back of what happened with Boris Johnson, where a number of his nominations for peerages um, were turned down by the committee that reviews them. So uh, I think uh, what's happened is that a couple of people have said, well, actually, is it is it right that given how little time I spent uh, in number 10 working for uh, Liz Truss as Prime Minister, that I receive uh, an award um, that would be on a par with somebody who might have worked uh, in a charity uh, or worked in politics for many, many years, mm. raised millions of pounds potentially, uh, but I've only done a few days uh, in office with her working at the heart of government maybe, but for such a short period of time, it just doesn't seem right uh, that I accept this, uh, that I accept this award. Sure. It's somewhat of an embarrassment, of course, for Liz Truss, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is. Um, Yasmin, briefly, your thoughts on this, because I do want to get on to the football. Well, this this is uh, so interesting, because I think it, there's also, it's also... It's a, also, I think, a lot of people just don't want to be anywhere near Liz Truss after what she did to the country and, uh, you know, to, to everybody who, with any kind of savings and so on. I mean, she was responsible with Kwasi Kwarteng for, for a lot. And so to take an honour from her, maybe for some people, would really not smell right. Mm -hmm. So good on them. I wish more people did decline honours for the right reason. This is a good reason. This is a right reason, the right thing to do. Well, I'll, I'll, let, um, you know, I'll let you know, Yasmin, when they, when they finally get around to on. offering me one. Um, but let's have a look, shall we, just very briefly at the, at the story and on the front of The Guardian and, and, and pretty much everywhere else. The Lionesses, uh, Theo, making it to the quarterfinals. But, but as, as Gary Lineker himself pointing out, with a, with a very, very Beckham-esque moment in the middle of it, it wouldn't be England at a World it, Cup. It, was, like it like was, wasn't it? And in the eight, 87th minute in that, uh, that stamp from Lauren James, and of course she's been a star of this World Cup for mm. England um, so far, um, having scored three goals, three assists um, during uh, the group stages, but uh, lost her uh, lost her cool in that very uh, in that final three minutes of normal time and um, stamped on uh, one of the Nigerian players and of course was immediately sent off. Now she's going to be banned for one game. From what I've read, that that could be extended for another two games. She could be out of the tournament should mm. FIFA decide uh, to take further uh, further sanction 
uh, is necessary, but she's out for at least one game, so won't be taking part in, in that uh, match against either Colombia or Jamaica in the quarterfinals. But of course, we're through. We made it through on penalties um, quite comprehensively. Um, so uh, onwards. And of course, the United States, one of the favourites in the tournament, uh, were knocked out earlier by Sweden. So uh, fingers crossed, despite what happened in the 87th minute, a bit like uh, David Beckham and is it Diego <laughs> Simeone. Uh, back Join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the TAO Media family. Please like and share TAO Media. We love you all. Please support TAO Media Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.